Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is James Wallace. I'm the Director of the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Multicultural Affairs. Welcome. Thank you for joining us for this um, timely conversation. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to introduce the Chancellor of our institution, Chancellor Ken Iwama, uh, and he'll get us started. Chancellor Iwama. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm so happy and so excited to be here with you uh, today. Uh, Any time during a pandemic when you can reconnect with friends, uh, even through Zoom, uh, it is wonderful, if not life affirming. So th this is a wonderful day today. And today we are joined by two great friends uh, who are linked by the common bond of IU Northwest history. Uh, and that would be Todd Deloney, IU Northwest alumnus, and Peggy Elliott, IU Northwest Chancellor Emerita. So two familiar faces to hopefully many people in the audience today. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, which we just observed um, on Monday, is a time to reflect upon Dr. King's inspirational legacy of advancing racial equity, social justice, equal opportunity, built upon the moral imperatives of love and empathy. It not only celebrates the great person and his great words, but most significantly celebrate Dr. King's actions, his lifetime of work. I stress this because I believe that the continuing social injustices, which have been recently dilated across our nation, reflect one of the basic concepts of anti-racism, that combating racism and inequality is not passive, it must be active. Either you are actively working toward a solution or you are indeed left as part of the problem. So it's fitting today that we bring together two individuals involved in a landmark action in our institution's history, the first recognition of Martin Luther King Jr. Day as a holiday at IU Northwest some 30 years ago, my how time flies. <laughs> I remember reading about this part of IU Northwest history before I ever stepped foot on our campus and I had asked uh, the recently retired Kathy Malone, our former director of executive administration in the chancellor's office to help facilitate my initial meetings with Todd uh, and Peggy, which she did. So thank you, Kathy. And thank you to James Wallace, Jerry Pat Gabbert, Marisa Villalobos, Aaron Pagores, Eric Botker, and the UITS team, Amy Diaz, Candy Bushnell, and everyone else who assisted in bringing this event to our campus. Again, thank you for all coming here today. And I would like to now hand this over to our moderator, James Wallace, Director of the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Multicultural Affairs. Thank you, James. Thank you, Chancellor. Um, again, when I uh, first got into this position, I always wondered why um, our campus didn't do anything on MLK Day, not knowing that history. So I am delighted as well uh, to have two folks who were uh, instrumentally involved in bringing that to reality. Um, we have, again, Chancellor uh, Emerita Peggy Elliott Miller, who's a proud IU alumna. And she served as chancellor of this campus, I believe from 1983 to 1992. Is that correct, Chancellor? That's about right. Outstanding. <laughs> Well, After 30 again. years, some things blur. <laughs> but not that unforgettable time here on our campus, indeed. No, I love it. And we also have, of course, Todd Deloney Sr., a 1992 graduate with a BA in organizational communications. And in 2013, he received a certificate in non-for-profit management. He was the president and founding member of the Black Student Union on our campus. Thank Welcome you. to you, Todd. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So before we dig into the meat of the discussion, I wanted to kind of set the context for, you know, what was happening at the time and how did, what was the legislative history of that holiday? Um, the holiday was originally proposed by John Conyers, a Democrat from Michigan, and uh, U.S. Senator Edward Brooke, a Republican from Massachusetts. Uh, they introduced the bill to Congress to make the King birthday a national holiday. Uh, it first came to a vote in the House of Representatives in 1979. However, it fell five votes short of the number needed for passage. Uh, fast forward to 1983, when uh, Gary's own state representative, Katie Hall, reintroduced that legislation. And on November 2nd, 1983, Ronald Reagan signed the bill into law, creating the federal holiday honoring Dr. King. Uh, the federal holiday was observed for the first time three years later on January 20th, 1986. And keep in mind, this is the first time a national holiday was set aside for African Americans, for an African American, excuse me, and the only national holiday to honor a U.S. citizen who was not a former president. Nevertheless, states were slow to adopt the holiday as a paid state holiday, many expressing concerns about the cost of letting uh, employees off for the day. Uh, there were some consequences to some of those states, 
Arizona famously lost the chance to host the Super Bowl 27 after voters declined to support a referendum on the issue. Several other states acknowledged the King holiday, but combined it with celebrations of Robert E. Lee. Those states included Arkansas, Alabama, Mississippi, and Virginia. It was not until May the 2nd of 2000 that South Carolina became the last state to recognize the holiday as a state holiday. Now, as for Indiana, um, after the United States celebrated the first King holiday, thanks in part of the work to uh, Representative Katie Hall, uh, Charlie Brown, and State Rep Hurley Goodall in Muncie, they did some legislative maneuvering, and then they got the bill passed in, in Indiana in uh, 1986. So that brings us to the 1989-90 academic year um, and the events uh, that we're going to discuss here today. So, um, you know, Todd, I'll start with you. Can you tell me a little bit about your experiences as a student and, you know, how you came to have that one-man protest? Well, um, in terms of what was going on on campus, I remember a friend of mine, he and I had a class. This was in 1983, Chancellor Elliott. The, the, that was my first semester here. And uh, he, he pulled me aside and told me that um, uh, I, I should chill out in asking Dr. Poulard so many questions and challenging Dr. Poulard and you, you, I'm, that's gonna result in a bad grade. And I was like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Aren't we here to learn? Yeah, 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 but, but see, you know, you don't wanna rub him the wrong way. And uh, from that conversation and a few other things that went on, I, uh, I felt that uh, uh, the students, the black students on campus uh, acted as if they were kind of intimidated. Um, and uh, as I went to school in East Chicago, see, I, I, East Chicago school was mixed, okay? It was blacks, whites, and Mexicans. And Hispanics, I'm sorry, uh, were on our campus, but but mostly on the uh, IUN's campus, most of the blacks were from the city of Gary, and uh, they had not interacted with the different races. So I'm, I'm you know, I had that feeling that uh, they were kind of, uh, uh, in my opinion, kind of uh, intimidated, and uh, that's what uh, led me to. Uh, joined the, uh, at that time, it was the, uh, the uh, Minority Planning Committee. Well, um, that first year, 84, we were supposed to have a, um, uh, uh, a Black History Month celebration, and we had a little something, something. But, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, come 85, I spoke with the uh, powers that be and some friends that were part of this group. And I told them that, well, wait a minute, let's change the name and call it what it is. It's a Black Student Union. That's, it, it was com comprised mainly of Blacks. We were the only ones in there. And so what was it that was holding uh, us back from saying this is a Black Student Union? And so uh, after, after being, uh, being uh, winning the elections, uh, for president, I uh, closed the election portion of the meeting and put on the floor that uh, uh, we call this our organization, the IUN, Indiana University Northwest Black Student Union. And, uh, and that was in 1985, and that's how it all began. Okay, so, um, you know, what kind of support did you get from the administration uh, when you say, oh, we're going to have a Black Student Union on this campus. And Chancellor Elliott, you can chime in here as well with your thoughts and reflections of that time. Well, I was really quite pleased because I didn't think we had as many minority students as we really needed. And I always worried that we were missing part of the market. And I, uh, I worked with many of the churches uh, and said, can, what can we do? Can we sponsor pre-ACT coaching or SAT coaching class? What can we do? Let's, we, we need to take this seriously. Uh, some people took me seriously and some people didn't, just as you remember, Todd. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, 
And the same was true with our Hispanic population, which was teeny tiny in those days. So uh, when I started trying to make some friends in East Chicago where the majority of that population was to see if we could, um, I guess, I, I guess we had more success with, with my Gary friends than I did there, but eventually, one of the Gaynor scholars was a Hispanic girl. I was so excited and thrilled. And uh, I remember her dad coming to me afterwards and saying, this is the reason I swam the river. And I cried, but it, she was, she's a wonderful MD today and all that kind of thing. So anyway, we, we, had, we had kind of a struggle, but um, it, it, when it was time to have Martin Luther King Day as a, as a student holiday, Todd, you were involved. I believe you're the first one that, that <laughs> I thought could, would back me up on it because I hadn't been very successful so far. So do you want to tell that part? Well, you know what, Chancellor Elliott, uh, uh, let, me, let me point this out to you in particular. You were a dream come true. Because oh goodness, all of, my all, age, a dream. <laughs> all, uh, all of the uh, notions that I had for the Black Student Union, uh, you were right in, 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 in. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Now, uh, you asked how, uh, what, how much support we had. Of course, we had the support of um, uh, Dr. Catlin and yeah, Dr. Pentecost. And you also had Dr. Rutledge. Right, right, Dr. Rutledge. He was real. And, and, yeah, and you uh, had me. <laughs> and and, and um, uh, we were trying to do the things to generate interest for the minority students. I mean, we were uh, having, a, we had what we called a, a book co-op. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas if I took uh, English one, the first semester, I would make that book available to the, uh, for the next semester at a discounted price uh, because we were actually purchasing books back then. Oh, uh, I know. You uh, know. But you know We what? actually ran from, from books. <laughs> exactly. You know what? I, I think something that's interesting, though, um, is when we went to charter the organization, uh, there was a, uh, I don't, I don't, don't want to mention names, but there were three uh, Caucasian uh, professors and uh, they were asking me, well, why do you have to call it Black Student Union? And, you know, black student. And, and you know, I, I felt that... Uh, you wanted were, an identity for crying out exactly, loud. Exactly. I felt that they were uncomfortable with the, with the name of the organization. And so uh, back then, uh, I was I was a young buck at that time, uh, and I was just all right. I, we were all pretty young at that time, and it, and there it, were some real champions on. You had you had friends. You just were <laughs> they asked questions. They asked questions, uh, and I would sit there. Four hundred years. <laughs> well, how long did you? Why should you do this or that? Four hundred years. Well, what color is the sky? 400 years, you know. I mean, whatever question they asked me, all I was saying was 400 years, 400 oh, years, Lord. 400 years. So let now, me so you let didn't me, tell me all of that because I could have what Congressman Lewis would have called some good trouble. <laughs> so, so let me step in here, uh, Todd. Um, you know, you established the BSU, you know, to provide support for, for Black students on campus. You know, were there any, you know, other causes beyond 400 years that you wanted to express to the community? Uh, was there anything else going on? How, what, you know, certainly I had shared the history of the King holiday, but, you know, mm -hmm. what else was happening mm -hmm. on campus that but you all were concerned about? There were some things happening in the community that the, that the university was very involved in that I'm not sure Todd would have known about at that time. At the time of the March on Washington, uh, bishop Grutka, who was the Catholic bishop then, now God rest his soul, uh, and a group of bankers and businessmen and Reverend uh, Lowry and many others uh, got together. I think I think, I think Mr. Bennett at the NCAA and Miss mm -hmm. Gentry at the Urban League. Anyway, they got a bus full of people from Gary, and they all went right. to the to the walk march. And when they came back, they decided that 
they needed a way to address things like this. See, Todd, if you'd known about the cadre then, they right. would have been, well, they were there later on, but because I knew about them. But mm -hmm. uh, they came back and decided they'd just be a group and that if anything was going on that shouldn't be going on or should, wasn't going on that should be going on, they'd get together and see what they could do about it because they weren't going to just come back and, and ignore anything. So uh, if something was out there that needed to be known about or done about, one of the cadre members would call me and because we were the only one that had a place you could eat in a room big enough for a bunch, <laughs> <laughs> I would buy lunch and we would, we would, get to work and the first one I was involved in is this too much to tell about it but it does fit all together Sweet. was uh, one really awful winter and it was a time when when there were so many layoffs at all the mills and all the oil plants and it, it was a it was a tough time and Todd you may have remembered that but mm -hmm. it was a really tough time uh, and the winter was going to be brutal. And so one of the cadre called and we got together and we decided we weren't going to let any children in, in Gary, it was just Gary then, starve. We were going to find a way to keep those food pantries filled. So mm -hmm. we had everybody and his brother in on trying to figure out how it was the best way to make money and a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And so what we came up with was we had a, you know, I'll tell you later, some of the people that helped this really helped with this. We had, we got the Genesis Center and we were, had advertised a concert, Whitney Houston, and then uh, we, we brought Sweetness over too. And he was gonna sign autographs for us. So with all, we talked, we went out and we asked, for money and help from our friends and our friends' friends and our strangers and our kin folks and and any of the people that we thought were really going to be supported. And truth be told, we did finally, the cadre did finally pull off that concert and we made enough money that the food bands, uh, pantries were all taken mm -hmm. care of that winter. But that was the sort of things we did. And then we just dissolved till something else came up. And my next something else that came up was uh, uh, getting Martin Luther King Day as a holiday for our campus. So that's kind of a little background. And see if you know about them, I could have had them come in again. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, Chancellor Elliott. And it's really a demonstration of I use long term commitment to the city and, and, oh, yeah. and that connection, that community engagement that's so vital. It's so vital. Right. And um, and it was a network. Uh, there were bankers and pastors and just people like me and anybody we could catch sort of who would, would, was committed. And the bishop was there. And I remember one time when I was not sure I could get all three of the mayors to agree on something. <laughs> the okay. bishop said, don't worry about it. If they're good Catholic boys, I'll speak to them about their souls. <laughs> so, we didn't have any more trouble after that. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. Awesome. So I want to move, I'm going to move the story forward just a little bit because you know, Todd, you established the VSU, the city of Gary acknowledged the holiday. Uh, that was in 86 and then 87, um, you know, you had some challenges that uh, sort of changed your life. Can you talk a little bit about that and what that meant for you when you, um, you know, as your story continues? Sure. Well, once again, as, as the late Representative Lewis would have said, I got myself in some good trouble. <laughs> I've never been sorry. Uh, I went to this we did not have the power. The IU system and Purdue, none of them gave Martin Luther King Day as a holiday. And I went to, although our, our Katie had carried it for us, and we all felt, we all sort of felt like that we somehow he was part of us because Reverend James and Reverend Lowry and all these people yeah. knew him. And I may be incorrect because 30 years is a long time when you're as old as I am. But I believe Reverend James was on the Edmund Pettit 
Pettit Bridge with King. I'm pretty mm -hmm. yeah, sure. Yeah, he was. That. He was. He was. And so we all felt close, and and we did have some of the King family at IUN several times over the years. But at any rate, I went in. I. I knew it was not going to be an easy sell because I had to get it through the whole system. And none of the systems were giving the day. And so I had a few friends around. Todd was one of the <laughs> future leaders. And, and yeah. I still had the cadre. And, and uh, so I, I went to, first I had to go through the chancellors. And the chancellors were not very excited about it. Nobody said it was a bad idea, but they they had other priorities for their campus and they didn't want to trade off anything from my one campus to get the day. And so we went round and round and round and yeah. then, the, then the big stumbling block came. Universities had been quite unpopular with the legislators those days because we had protested against wars we didn't like. We had protested <laughs> against racism. We had protested against uh, civil rights and unequal civil rights. You know, what somebody said to me, you people would protest an apostrophe. I said, bring me one and we'll see. But, but there was a sense because some serious damage was done and, and a few lives lost, but university buildings and things had been burned. And so there was a sense in the legislature that we were just all fooling around. We weren't paying attention to what we were supposed to do. And, and, and that was not a good thing. And we ought to get serious about university work and study and all that. So the first big stumbling block was, uh, you know, well, it is just be terrible if you let, if you wanted to take students away from their studies for a whole day, because we didn't, we didn't fudge about it. We didn't say we were going to have a Martin Luther King study day. We said we were going to have a celebration and a remembrance. So, right. well, that was outrageous because, you know, I, I would also be cheating them because they'd paid for that day. Oh, it went on and on and on and yeah. on. Yeah, uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold okay. on. Chancellor Elliott, I want to hold on a moment and circle back because uh, I, I was asking Ty specifically about, you know, his journey and then what motivated him to, you know, do the one man protest. So I want to come back to that because that's sort of, it helps end the story. But I want to talk about that, that piece right there with Ty. Okay, Ty. okay. okay. well, uh, in 1987, I was scheduled to graduate in 1988. Uh, that was that was the year that uh, Reverend Jackson was running for the presidency, and I, I recall that uh, um, Mayor Hatcher called me at my house and asked me to uh, if I could to set something up so he can come on campus. So uh, we worked that out through Chancellor uh, through uh, uh, Chancellor Elliott and Vice Chancellor Cope. So now I'm I'm co coasted now. I I've gotten a, a, a I've a hosted a presidential candidate. The BSU is rolling. We got an award. I, I, I'm on top of the world now because I'm about to graduate, right? And then in in uh, on September the 27th, 1987, I suffered a near fatal stroke. I had uh, uh, my speech was impaired. I had paralysis. My memory was totally wiped out. Uh, I remember uh, stumbling on campus, trying to find my way back to the person that I was prior to the stroke. And uh, uh, Patricia Grady, Patricia Grady, she was over the hill. She would have helped. She was over the uh, Career Beginnings Program. Yes, she worked with Dr. Rutledge when we got and, that funded. And, um, she asked me, she said, Ty, when are you coming back to work? And I'm like, what? Coming back to work? When are you coming back to work? I can't, can't you see? I'm, 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 I can't do nothing. You know? No, the, the students need you. The students want you. And so I came back to work and I had, uh, had to enroll in classes, re-enroll in classes in 1988. I, knew I didn't know anything, but I'm, I was big, I was a stubborn 
uh, uh, strong will oh. type of brother. <laughs> and and uh, I'm like, uh uh, I'm going back to campus full time and I'm going to finish this last year of school. Well, uh, a, 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 a test was coming. I studied for that test all night when I sat at the table uh, or, or, or at my desk ready to, ready to write answers down. I couldn't remember anything. My mind was just total blank. And I remember I went right upstairs in this building that I'm standing. Actually, actually, it was right down the hall from this building, from this seat. And I cried like a baby, man, because uh, uh, I couldn't know, I didn't know anything. I couldn't do anything. Uh, and uh, uh, I was determined, uh, regardless of whatever limitations that I had going on, I told myself, you're going to get this degree. You're going to get this because that's, you know, and, and see, I would have, I was the first in my family to ever have received a, a college degree. And uh, part of, excuse me, part of that motivation was the fact that I was working with uh, uh, high school kids, career beginnings, and, and I'm sitting here telling them to, Come on, do hard, work hard, get it done. You can get it done. You, regardless of what I, the Chancellor Elliott, I used to use you as an example. I'd tell the kids while I'm standing in front of the uh, audience, I'd tell the kids, look here, if Chancellor Elliott was standing right behind you guys and she would say, here, Todd, walk, get through, get past all these kids and you get this degree, I'd tell, 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 tell the students, I'd say, I'm sorry. I love you. You're my friend. I love everybody, but I would do the, anything to get through to you guys to earn that degree. And, uh, you know, that, 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 uh, uh, uh motivated me. Uh, uh, I, cause it, cause I had to develop, uh, uh, motivation tactics, you know, just to keep me going. I mean, I was like to, uh, I remember, uh, on February, February the 15th, 1988, I could finally brush the waves in my hair, man. And my hair, you know, I had I had a hairdo that was going on. She had fuzzy hair. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, you know, uh, 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 I, I, uh, uh, those, those were some dark times. Yes, they were. You know, being, being, uh, being fully honest. They, are, they were dark times. Because, uh, 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 they but you made it. That's I couldn't. I couldn't accept myself not having earned that degree. On the one hand, and on the other hand, I didn't know how the hell I was going to make it uh, because it was, you know, just that type of vibe. And uh, I want to. I, I can't call her name right now. But I'll bet Barbara Cope was. The there's, one this, there's this one. She no. She was a Spanish professor. Oh, that. And, and she would. Uh, uh, my last year, she she would allow me to go into her office and take the exams because at that, yes. at that point, oh, I yes. test the anxiety. I'd sit there, Brother Wallace, call She's myself still and around. doing the oh. test, and I'd look up, everybody walking out the door, and I didn't even wrote the first answer yet. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> she was wonderful. She was the head of the modern language yeah, but, department but she, for but a long she allowed, time. She allowed me to uh, 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 finish that second year Spanish. And, uh, you know, that, that was the, the rest is history. Well, Todd, you know, overcoming those obstacles, you know, was really important. But, um, you know, and I, I appreciate you sharing that because you didn't have to uh, with the audience. And then certainly students that are on the line can, you know, take note of that because this is not easy. Oh, no. It's not was. an easy task. So you, you managed to recover enough to continue your studies. Mm -hmm. And then what led you to the one man protest? What, what? Well, you know, uh, at that time, I was also a member of the Ecumenical Committee of Northwest Indiana, of which Chancellor Elliott was a member as well. And we're talking about an organization with uh, Reverend James, uh, Reverend, uh, 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 Mr. Harris of the Info, uh, Art Daranazzi, Bishop Grutka, Vernon Smith, Mr. Bennett, head of the uh, NAACP. Mr. Means was on there. Exactly. And, and, and um, you know, 
And they allowed me, I know what it was, they allowed me to speak at the uh, at the uh, ceremony. So I did something, you know, and then when I, as I was coming over the expressway, I looked and I saw that, saw the campus and the campus was full. The campus was totally full. And I said, well, well, forget that. I'm going to do it. Now, I had been talking about doing it, thinking about doing it. But uh, when I saw the campus full like that, I said, this is it. So I went home and I stayed right down the block. So it wasn't, you know, that wasn't uh, 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 anything. But I remember putting on a sandwich board sign uh, in the front, do the right thing, pay tribute to my, Dr. Martin Luther King. And I forget what it says on the back. But uh, anyway, as I was walking down, down uh, Adams Street, it, it's fortunate that I ran across Miss um, Barbara Cope because she was my supervisor and she was over the Career Beginnings Program. Now, I, I was not president of the BSU at that time, the first time. And so I thought to ask Chancellor, uh, uh, not Chancellor Elliott, but uh, Miss Barbara Cope, whether or not I would uh, shine a, a negative light on the career beginnings program. She told me that I wouldn't. So, and I, I, I went out there and started walking and, 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 and uh, I can tell you, those first couple steps were hard. It I'm was scary. like, it was like, it was, uh, Lord help me. I was trying to get my groove back, okay? I was trying to get my groove back. And I'm walking and walking, okay, yeah, this feels good. Okay, now we're rolling, now we're rolling, now we're rolling. And uh, so also, uh, after about an hour, I guess the uh, car started to see me and notice me and they honking and whatnot. And then on the Northwest end of the campus, right by the, uh, between the, um, golf course, that was when I heard something come whistling by me. Whoa, 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 what, the, what the heck was that? Then, so the next time I'm coming around, there's something else, some, and I'm looking and there's some rocks or something. Going, wait a minute. So then uh, the next time around, there were, there were some, some guys in the car telling my nigga, go home, go home, go home, and all of this and that. And so, like I said, they didn't lived, go to IUN. I lived right down the street. I live and see nobody knew that I lived right down the street. And I and my boy Pete, my boy Pete, scurvy dog. I was gonna tell him to come out here and watch my back. But then I thought about it and I realized that Pete wasn't a non-violent type of guy. <laughs> okay, so now if something happened to me, he'd start becoming yeah. violent, and I did, I knew that that would you know obviously that would take away from what I was trying to accomplish. Right. So uh, I had to let that go and whatnot, and uh, just continued on with the uh, demonstration. So so Todd, um, I have a question for you. Um, this first that was in 1990, right? Right. Right. Okay, and. My second question, was that his nickname? <laughs> Scurvy Dog? Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I didn't, it's that, his real name is Levonis Talbert, and he took the picture right. of, uh, of uh, our, our, our demonstration and whatnot uh, the, the, the next year. But I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to throw that out there. Uh, that it was, just slipped out, I know, that's, that's pretty gangster. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and may he rest in peace. Indeed, you know, indeed. And, and add that, but uh, uh, yeah, I knew Scurvy Dog would have came out there and would have like, okay. <laughs> right. right. Well, no. You know, and probably the rest of you don't remember that when I got Mrs. Culp appointed as vice chancellor, that she was the first woman of color to be exactly. a vice chancellor in the whole exactly. system. Like I'd been the first woman to be yeah. a chancellor. And so yeah. that was wonderful. She was terrific. Yes, she was. Our campus is with this, but not well. That's awesome. I, I did not know that either. And uh, learning something new every day. I'm so glad we're having this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good so, conversation. So the well, um so that was the first year that you did right. that. You were out um, you know, by yourself. You started this 
this movement. And then, and then what happened, you know, the following. Well, as I was walking, I was thinking that more than likely, nobody knows what the heck I'm doing out here. Okay. But I just kept walking. So, so I started to think, now, what can I do to maintain the momentum of the movement? So I'm walking, still walking and whatnot. And um, <laughs> uh, suddenly, <laughs> suddenly it occurred to me that, again, I wasn't, I wasn't the president of the BSU at that time. So I couldn't call a meeting and tell the troops and do all of this kind of stuff. So, and, and living right down the street now, on January 29th, of oh, February, I'm sorry, February 29th or 28th of that same year, I, early in the morning, about seven o'clock, soon as the doors opened in the, in the uh, cafeteria, I started placing little post-it notes uh, on, on the, on the, uh, uh, on the uh, uh, benches and whatnot, telling them, yeah, there's going to be a demonstration at 1245, and we're going to go outside. Uh, this is in honor of Black History Month. We're going to go outside, and we aren't going to say a word. We aren't going to say anything. Uh, and uh, But we, we would be honoring the uh, our, our uh, forefathers that went to college and made, made college accessible to for us. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, and we did everything perfectly. Didn't did not block anybody's uh, way to, to class and whatnot. And from tw from twelve forty five till twelve fifty five, we all just stood there, right in the center of the campus, holding hands. Didn't say a word. Didn't say anything or whatnot. And uh, 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 I, I got I got blasted for it. And so after after we had. Uh, uh, did that demonstration, I hurried off campus because I knew they would probably be wanting to talk to me and ask me what they're not. No, uh, and unfortunately, Chancellor Elliott, I can say this to you now, uh, we, the intention of the demonstration was not to, not necessarily to honor uh, our, our ancestors before us, but that was a message to you and your administration that we're going to come on with it next year now, so you guys better get ready so we showing you guys, look, right. this is what's going to happen. Todd, let me step in. I was in. thrilled to have a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, let me step in right here because I went to the archives uh -huh. and I got the actual document that was from that silent vigil. And oh, I want to wow. read what it says here. Where grassy area outside of Moraine Student Center, when Wednesday, February 28th at 1240 to 1 o'clock, why? To commemorate the many past sacrifices made by our forefathers in our behalf to obtain the right for us to receive higher education. As such, we will, re re excuse me, we will rededicate ourselves to achieving the goals which our predecessors gave their lives for and also to continue our efforts to make the path to higher education smoother for generations to come. Wow. Things to keep in mind. The time was chosen so that it would not interfere with anyone's classes. The site was selected so we would not be blocking anyone's access to any building. This is a peaceful demonstration, not a protest. Many people will be watching, students, faculty, staff, also the area newspapers. Let us carry ourselves with dignity and respect. Um, at 1256, we will join together and sing, lift every voice and sing our national anthem. We will gather in spite of the weather What's 15 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you beautifully know, done. You know what? I, to, to, to hear you read that, I didn't know that that was in, in, the, in the archives or whatnot, but to hear you read that, that's exactly what was going on. And again, nobody knew the real purpose was, as I said, Chancellor Elliott, and I, I apologize now, where that real effort was to, to, to say, okay, Chancellor Elliott, here we come. This is what we're going to do. So you guys get ready for it. And now uh, uh, to uh, continue on, if, if you don't mind. Please. Uh, when uh, that, in the school year of 90, 91, uh, I, part of the plan that I came up with after 
from the walking was that I would become president of the Black Student Union again, which I did. And so I was the president again. So now I can officially call some meetings and do all this and that kind of stuff, right? Because I got, you know, because I got these people behind me. And uh, so what we did was we had a gentleman's agreement with other organizations on campus, uh, uh, basically saying that we will support your efforts and, and your issues as long as you support ours. And uh, we did, uh, because I went to a few uh, biology club meetings and several other <laughs> members of- You loved everybody. <laughs> <laughs> several other members of the Black Student Union went to uh, other organizations uh, meetings as well. Then uh, we had a, uh, we hosted, the Black Student Union hosted the Halloween party at Dick's that same year. Now Somehow, I have to tell you, I was not given a lot of information about that party, so I'm all ears. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so see, you know, the, the uh, again, the objective was to uh, garner support from other student organizations. Now, uh, to be honest, the expectation was that, you know, we don't know, we doubt if you, anybody's going to participate, but nevertheless, we made the effort. So we made the effort. Now, then uh, I received, uh, or better yet, hold on, September, I sent a letter to the chancellor telling her that for the, the King Day 91, the Black Student Union is going to boycott. The Black Student Union is going to collect signatures. And the Black Student Union is going to come back on campus and rally on campus. Now, Chancellor Elliott, and that, to my surprise, Chancellor Elliott said, oh, OK. She sent out a memo asking for the Black Student Union to meet with her. And uh, there were other uh, officials on uh, campus officials to meet as well, along with uh, uh, trustee uh, Icorn. And, yes, uh, he was really, he yeah, was really a good one. And, and we met, and they were uh, trying to, try, you know, telling us that, well, uh, you know, Dr. King would want us to be in class and, and this and that or whatever, you know, and, and we took that under, uh, under advisement. And then Icorn was one of our good friends. And then, then the chancellor had, her, her, her thing was like, well, why can't y'all just wait till Bloomington does something or whatnot? Well, at that time, my response was, we're the only campus who's who doing something. So we're going to stay, we're going to keep this vibe rolling. And then uh, the student government president said something that was very interesting. And she was critical. Uh, uh, I don't know if, uh, if, you know, I should say her name or whatnot, but she was critical. And she had said that she didn't want this movement to be, to be a black versus white movement. And so uh, I was upset that she- Should became, have offered her a membership. <laughs> and, 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 and you know what, Chancellor Elliott? That's exactly what I did. Because I sat down, I took 10 to, to get my breath back and said, well, OK, uh, uh, we, in the presence of Trustee Icorn, Chancellor Elliott, Ms. Barbara Cope and all everybody involved, we cordially invite you to come join us in our protest demonstration. And and she uh, was true, and she said she would, and she was true to her word. If you look um, uh, on the uh, on the picture we have, you'll see. Uh, she's standing right there uh, in front of the uh, library, and I'm grabbing her hand, holding her hand, and um, and uh, she's once we once we uh, finish the demonstration on campus, we was I was standing in front of Rain Tree Hall, and the, the students were standing, you know, cat a corner from me, and she was in the first. She was the first person in line. She was there. She stayed there and, and she, you know, she did what she what she said she would do. So Todd, this was the second march. Right. In 91. In 91. Okay. Right. So um, we've got 15 more minutes left and I want to um, move us towards the conclusion. So after the second march, then I want to circle back to you, uh, Chancellor Elliot Miller. Um, you know, what happened next as far as getting the trustees to to sign off on this? What did that look like? 
Well, all the time that, that Todd had been involved, i have been working too without much success. But after I got past the chancellors, I had been an intern in uh, President Ryan's office. He was gone by then. And I had become very closely acquainted with, with Chancellor Wells. And so I went for them to advise because they what they said in the system usually went. And so they began to work with us too. And uh, we got past the fact that, that uh, you know, Everybody didn't have to have the day. We wanted the day. We wanted it because we felt this connection with Dr. King and so many of the people that we knew and supported us did too. And, you know, I, I was pushing, but I couldn't get around the uh, business about how I would be cheating the students out of a day of instruction and that the university students ought to get serious and quit protesting, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then, I came up with a plan. <laughs> it was good trouble, but I got away with it. <laughs> but I changed the schedule for the next year so that we had one extra day of instruction. And that meant nobody could say I had taken them away from the students. I didn't do that. <laughs> well, I didn't tell you, but I just did it, and then yeah. I the calendar, counted up the days. <laughs> so yeah, I, remember, I got in I some remember. trouble. I got in some trouble, and I didn't care, and still don't. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, uh, I believe it was April Something or like May that. during that same year, ninety-one, that the um, uh, the calendar committee met. Oh yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and they voted unanimously, unanimously to close the campus in mm -hmm. in, in, in ninety two and close the campus and the clamp the campus would be effective in nineteen ninety two. And it yeah, just it, it, the way they could they could defend it or I could defend it to them and to everybody else was I had covered it. Right, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Now, and, and, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. And wow. it just so it, I'm sorry. It, and it just so happens. Well, no, no, no. Go ahead, Brother Wallace. I'm sorry. Well, I just wanted to step in there because just to make sure that you know we have a complete understanding. When I did my research, what I discovered, and I have all the old clippings here, and I'm just going to read this here. While there were campus celebrations for the holiday during the spring semester 1990-1991 that included. Gary Mayer, Thomas Barnes, and others. By 92, the university decided it would leave it to the chancellors to determine if the campuses would close for the holiday. By 1997, the trustees voted to make it a university holiday. And in 1998, all the campuses were closed for the day. And that's what I was but able we to pull. We closed ours in the beginning. Oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> ours was closed, and 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 we did that and we we were we we felt like it was the right thing to do but it took till 97 before everybody realized that his work and his influence needed to be honored by larger groups than just right. just the few of us so right. anyway that was that was the story and and we got away with it now i ask somebody, since we don't have much time, I'll cut to this. I called somebody who was still on the campus at that time and who was part of, uh, she knew all the things I was doing. Anyway, I said, after we got the holiday and nobody else got it and we went ahead with it, uh, what was the campus buzz at that time? And she said, were people happy? Were they mad? Were they, were they, what was the buzz? She said, everybody on campus talked about the fact that you knew all the verses to lift every voice and sing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah. there were, 
there no. wasn't resentment then. And no. there were lots of faculty like Jim Lane and others that you could always count on. And I hate to say names because I'll leave somebody out. And there were so many good people that, that worked with everybody to make it happen. But but we were the pioneers and I'm, I was proud of everybody. That's it. Outstanding. Well, you know, we're, we're moving towards the, um, <clears throat> We're moving towards our time together here today. Are there any, you know, closing thoughts or, you know, about the about the lasting impact or, you know, Todd, from your standpoint, you know, encouraging students to get engaged and, and what that means for the collegiate experience or, you know, from your standpoint, uh, Chancellor Elliot Miller, you know, what do you think is the best way to in, for students to engage with the administration or just anything else that you want to share with us uh, today? Well, I always had an open door to students. I, I, <laughs> they knew things I didn't know, so I thought they were very important to hear what they had to say. And so that, that dialogue began, and I think, I think there's something to be said that if you know the leader is interested and on that side, ah, there you go. People, people aren't quite as quick to criticize what's happening. That doesn't mean they don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't get some trouble about it, but um, I think that's good. But I wanted to ask a quick question. During this time, one of our other good friends was Vernon Smith, who started the IU Dons. Right, and right. I don't know exactly, I can't remember the dates in which that happened, but he was in the background happening too, as was Mayor Hatcher. And though some chancellors and Mayor Hatcher didn't get along. We were friends. Right, and he right. Was very helpful. And, 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 and Brother Wallace, you should have a uh, letter uh, written by Bernard Smith. I uh, sure that do. Was in the, that was in the collection. Chancellor Elliott, what had happened was that uh, in 2010, I was looking for information about the uh, protest okay. and the demonstration, and there was nothing in our archive nothing in the Calumet archives. So I got col a, a collection of materials and uh, Mr. Wallace is looking at those materials right now. Got so, it right here. Yes, got okay. it right here. We can say that there is, there is a, uh, a records about the march and, and all of that are, are stored in the uh, Calumet archives. Okay. Well, one of the things that I had uh, wondered about was that in an effort to tell more people about what was going on at IUN, uh, uh, our, we decided to have a program. The TV station offered us free time every week if we put on a program. So uh, Terry Lucas came to me, he was Mr. Texan, mm -hmm. and said, I think I can put together a TV program if you'll do it. And I said, he said, I, I, you line up the faculty and you sit there and I'll have a set and music and all that and you interview them and tell our story. Well, we did that. And I hated it at first because I sounded just like Dolly Parton on the TV. <laughs> I was not a professional at all. Right. And, but we've made over almost 200 of those. And I'm wondering if that in that group, there aren't some that dealt with, there must have been some that dealt with, I either talked to Barbara Cope or, or whoever, during those programs and I offered them to uh, our new chancellor and said would you like to have these they're on you know they're on cassettes so and they're in South Dakota I just thought somebody ought to keep them and they may be in the archives but if they aren't I will when I get back there I will make sure they're all transferred to IUN and we may find some history in there. We, we want them, Chancellor, so just so you know, <laughs> officially, I'm telling you right <laughs> All right, well, we took care of that. <laughs> yeah, we'll make that happen. Outstanding. Oh, Outstanding. Yeah, well, true. before we close out, um, there were some comments in the chat room I wanted to share with you all, um, particularly, um, you know, there are some folks, and I won't name anybody, but, you know, folks are really appreciative of, you know, you all being so open with your stories and, 
you know, sharing, you know, you know, people have said nothing but good things about you, Chancellor Elliot Miller, and you know, your legacy continues here at our campus, and we're just so glad that you were able to, you know, rejoin us uh, for today's discussion. I know James Lane uh, chimed in, and he offered quite a few comments about, um, you know, your leadership and the time when you was here, your conflict resolution skills, your ability to work with folks and open up the campus to the Gary community. That's a legacy that still continues with us here today. He um, had a whole lot to do with that, too. <laughs> Yes, he's certainly, he's a sounding board for me. He's always been supportive as I try to mine our history for those uh, conversations that will bring us value. Um, and then, um, you know, of course, uh, Dr. Smith is still here on our campus. Vernon Smith is still here and he still volunteers and he's still productive. Uh, so those folks that you were in contact with, they're still here and they're still doing that good work or getting in good trouble, as you will say. <laughs> Um, and then the final note, um, you know, glad that we're on the right side of history with this. I mean, it's very important that we set the example. And you exactly. mentioned, you know, two or three times when we were pioneers. Yeah. How you know oh, absolutely. We're pioneers. And I'm very proud to be a part of that legacy. Oh, and there were people we had that were, that were so important to have. And uh, it was important for us to get them there so our students knew them and, and could say they'd met Mm -hmm. I can the first one I can think of is Henry Cisneros, but people of all all persuasions and uh, Dr. Comer from Harvard, who was uh, from Gary or East, maybe East Chicago. As I said, the some of these things are a little blurred in time, but they were all good things. Indeed, I agree. Well, with those words, we will end today's conversation. Thank you, Todd Deloney Sr. You. for your leadership, um, for that effort. Thank you, Chancellor Peggy, Peggy Elliott Miller. Everybody for your leadership. Call me Chancellor Peggy. Don't stumble <laughs> over my Thank you, Todd and, and Chancellor thank Peggy you. and James. Well, I, I like to thank, thank uh, Indiana University Northwest for having me up here and for allowing me to say a little something because it's, it's been a rough road. Um, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm sorry, but I, but I have to say it. After 20 to 30 years of not being able to share my story, uh, that's kind of uh, saddening. But however, you know, it's like I, I knew this day would come. I wrote about it. I wrote about it. Excuse me, everybody. I wrote about it in this book, A Stroke of Genius and Great Expectations. And it talks about in the later, later portions of this book, it says that someday, someday, Indiana University is going to thank me <laughs> for starting these protests or whatnot. And I, I, I and and she, she, and I mean it's from the bottom of my heart. Uh, now that day is coming. That day is here. And I, I want to thank you, uh, Chancellor, for getting in touch. Well, it's with my me pleasure. And, and it's allowing me to come here and to uh, share, share, share my experiences. And uh, 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 one other thing, one other thing, Sandman, my youngest son, Chancellor Elliott, is a graduate of Indiana University's uh, School of Law. He's now uh, clerking for a federal judge in Chicago. And go I, you. you. Oh, I'm so proud. Next time I get in good trouble, I'll know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, Thank and Dr. You. Dr. Lane was an, always an, uh, an ally, and, and we all, sh at that time, most, almost all of us shared the same vision that, that we could do so much more. That's exactly. why I worked so hard to raise money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, again, thank you, Chancellor. Um, you have a great afternoon. Thank you. And all of you, God thank bless you and go IU. Go IU. <laughs> Stay strong. <laughs>